So why does the calories in, calories out not work? Because I think this is a really important conversation, especially now a lot of people in the UK are getting to things like high rocks and they're doing a lot more weightlifting and they're kind of getting into that more stronger mindset. But I still think the conversation around nutrition for women is not clear. And I do still think that the calorie conversation is still such a big thing where people are tracking what they're eating, the calories that they're having. And I do remember even five years ago, there was a a 500 day calorie limit that a lot of my peers were going on um, to help lose weight. There was one, I don't know, 10 years ago, the special K diet where you would eat two bowls of cereal. Do you remember? And I I remember these things are still there. Um, but in just a slightly different context. So let's like divulge like why is it not calories in, calories out? Why is that not good for our health? Yeah. Well, when we look at it and I take it from the the view of women, right? We look at it, women have two areas in the hypothalamus that are super sensitive to nutrient density. One controls our endocrine system and the other one is more appetite control and immunity. So when we start trying to do calories in, calories out, we see that within four days of a low energy availability, you start to have a downturn of your thyroid and a flattening of your luteinizing hormone pulse. And we need to have our hormones pulsing in a certain fashion because we have a 24-hour circadian rhythm, but it's also from a cellular matrix as well as a whole body system. So when you start having interruptions to these pulses, you start having cellular disruption. So we start to see this early on in women. And the way that I point to it is if we're looking at how many like baseline calories of good quality food that a woman needs in order just to maintain basic endocrine health. We're seeing that you have a perturbance starting at 35 calories per kilogram of fat-free mass, but for men it's 15. So right there, if a man isn't eating as, as much, then he's going to lean up and get fitter and faster. When we see women who are delaying and not eating enough, they put on belly fat. They get a lot of disruption in the signaling for um, mitochondrial uptake of free fatty acids. So we start to have more what we call esterified fats floating around. And these esterified fats are a a change in the molecular shape, I guess is the best way to put it, from a free fatty acid. So it can't get pulled in to the skeletal muscle and the mitochondria. It goes to the liver And the liver is like, hey, I know what to do with this. I'm going to bind it up and store it as visceral fat or visceral fat, right? And the simple thing to break that chain is to have enough food, especially protein. So, you know, we've come from the whole conversations of low fat, high carb or low carb, high fat, right? No one's ever talked about protein. But the more research that's coming out about protein, the more we're seeing it is so incredibly important for women to get at least 1.6 grams per kilo of body weight per day. And this is even if you're just recreationally active. But then when you start seeing people who are training for training for high rocks, right? And the high, like I've been seeing the, the, the reels and things that people are training for the first high rocks. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you are not eating enough and you're training too much. And it's a direct, like people used to call it overtraining. People then moved on to adrenal fatigue, but it's basically, you're not giving your body enough food. You're not eating enough to maintain health. And I think this is where that whole like fasting thing comes in too, because people are now using it as an excuse to delay intake and have calorie restriction under a, a socially okay meme of how they're eating. Because, you know, back in the 80s or even the 70s, if you said you were fasting, people would think that you belonged in the hate in San Francisco as part of the hippie tribe, right? But now it's socially acceptable. Similar to yoga. Yeah. 